international humanitarian law applicable in armed conflict refers to international rules established by treaty or custom that are specifically intended to solve humanitarian problems that arise directly from international or non-international armed conflicts. For humanitarian reasons, these rules protect people and property affected by conflict by limiting the rights of the parties involved to choose their methods and means of warfare. It is critical for peacekeepers and civilians working in peace operations to understand International Humanitarian Law, or IHL, so that they can act lawfully and justly when working where armed conflicts are taking place. That is why the Peace Operations Training Institute has produced International Humanitarian Law and the Law of Armed Conflict by Mr Antoine Bouvier. In eight lessons, this course will educate you about the background of IHL key legal definitions, the Geneva Conventions and their additional protocols, the application of IHL in different types of armed conflicts and UN peace operations, and the role of the International Red Cross in IHL. Lesson 1 provides an overview of the history of IHL. Although similar customs were practised throughout history, modern IHL was born out of the Battle of Solferino in 1859, a conflict between French and Austrian forces that took place in what is now northern Italy. J. Henry Dunant, a Swiss national, recorded the miserable situation of the wounded left on the battlefield in his 1862 book, A Memory of Solferino, and proposed ideas that would lay the foundations for today's IHL treaties and the National Red Cross and Red Crescent societies. The 20th and 21st centuries saw key developments in international humanitarian law. From the 1949 Geneva Conventions and their additional protocols, to the 2017 Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Moreover, the first lesson of this course provides an overview of the sources of IHL, its basic rules, the standing of IHL within public international law, and the field of application of IHL. Lesson 2 covers the treaties and provisions of international humanitarian law. This lesson focuses on the fundamental rules common to the four Geneva Conventions and Protocol 1, rules protecting the wounded, the sick and the shipwrecked, rules protecting prisoners of war and rules protecting civilians and civilian population. Furthermore, you will learn how Article 2 common to the four Geneva Conventions, defines the situations in which the rules of the four Geneva Conventions and Protocol 1 apply. This lesson also pays due importance to the principle of distinction between combatants and civilians in observing IHL. States and international law have never treated domestic and international armed conflicts the same way. In recent years, however, the distinction between the two has become blurred and more recent treaties were designed to apply to both types of armed conflict. In Lesson 3, you will learn about the development of rules applicable to domestic armed conflicts. More specifically, this lesson summarises the rules and protections offered in Article 3 common to the four Geneva Conventions and Additional Protocol 2 regarding non-international armed conflicts. Next, Lesson 4 discusses IHL in relation to the means of warfare referring to weapons or systems of weapons and the methods of warfare which encompass any tactical or strategic means to overwhelm or weaken the adversary. Protocol 1 of the Geneva Conventions in particular aims to improve the safety of protected persons and objects. For example, it prohibits indiscriminate attacks and direct attacks against the civilian population. Regarding the means of warfare, many IHL treaties have been passed to limit or prohibit the use of certain conventional weapons, such as mines and booby traps, and weapons of mass destruction, such as chemical weapons. Lesson 5 will discuss how IHL is implemented. Implementation mechanisms include preventative measures in peacetime, such as states educating their armed forces, and passing national legislation that upholds IHL. You'll also learn how the Geneva Conventions of 1949 and Protocol 1 obligate states and military commanders to uphold the conventions and prevent and stop violations. 
Lesson 6 examines the complex and sometimes controversial relationship between human rights law, or HRL, and IHL. Both IHL and HRL are a part of public international law, share the same objective of protecting human beings, and contain rules related to the relationship between states and individuals. However, they differ in key areas, including when they apply and to whom they are applicable. For example, violations of IHL often occur on the battlefield, while violations of HRL more often occur in judicial, administrative or legislative decisions. Lesson 7 discusses how IHL applies to United Nations operations. According to the International Committee of the Red Cross, the fundamental principles and customary rules of IHL are applicable to UN forces. The UN takes the position that peacekeeping forces act on behalf of the international community at large and cannot be considered a party to conflict. Nonetheless, the UN has reinforced the need for forces to observe the principles and spirit of the general international conventions applicable to the conduct of military personnel. This is known as the Red Cross Clause. Lastly, Lesson 8 covers the role the International Committee of the Red Cross plays in promoting IHL. The organisation's primary activities include aiding conflict victims and persons displaced by conflicts, conducting forensic science and humanitarian action, distributing food aid in conflict situations, visiting prisoner of war camps, preventing weapon contamination and disseminating the rules of IHL. The Peace Operations Training Institute has produced this course to give you a comprehensive look at IHL, including how it's applied in armed conflicts and how it relates to UN peace operations. Once you have completed the course, you'll take a final exam covering all eight lessons. If you score 75% or better, you'll receive a certificate of completion. We thank you for your interest in international humanitarian law and the law of armed conflict and hope you find it useful and informative. <laughs>